Out of all positions in basketball, the point guard spot is arguably the most important. And in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different to kick off 2K25 by trading every single starting point guard in today's NBA to a random team. Starting off with Shea Gilgis Alexander of the OKC Thunder, after spinning this wheel to determine his new team, he ends up landing in Philadelphia to play with Joel Embiid and Paul George. This is without a doubt one of the best teams in the NBA, but I don't think anyone's going to be arguing that they're not. But it is kind of ironic that he's playing with PG now, considering the fact that they were traded for one another. After making his first finals appearance with the Mavericks, Luka Doncic is now going to be suiting up for the Golden State Warriors with Drew Holiday replacing him in Dallas. Having Luka replace Steph is definitely the best case scenario for these guys, but I highly doubt they're going to be any good down the line just because they're still lacking a little bit of depth. And speaking of the greatest shooter of all time, for the first time of his NBA career, he's donning a brand new jersey suiting up for the Orlando Magic, but I would be super hyped if this was my team. Just last season, they made the playoffs for the first time in around four years. They added a floor spacing veteran in KCP, and now we're bringing a 96 overall Stephen Curry to the lineup. Some more of the league's best include Damian Lillard on the Nuggets, Trey Young in Memphis, Tyrese Maxey's playing for the Bucks, Halliburton is unfortunately suiting up for the Hornets, while Brunson gets to be teammates with Victor Wimbanyama. There are also some other guys I didn't mention like John ja Moran. Hey, Cunningham is another great point guard that I forgot to bring up. And by this point, you've only been able to see the luckiest teams in the league. A handful of organizations weren't fortunate enough to get an all-star caliber player. As we have a look at the Portland Trailblazers, these guys didn't land on a good spin to acquiring Malcolm Brogdon. The Minnesota Timberwolves got Darius Garland. I mean, he isn't that bad, to be honest. OKC got a regressing James Harden. The Houston Rockets are bringing in number 13, Jalen Suggs. And uh, the Toronto Raptors, I almost forgot to mention De'Aaron Fox. Boston Celtics are replacing Drew Holiday with Scoot Henderson. And uh, the Atlanta Hawks have Chris Paul. <laughs> but yeah, since I didn't mention every single point guard, here they are now being shown on screen. After simulating to the All-Star break on top in the Eastern Conference, it's the Toronto Raptors, Cleveland Cavaliers, and New York Knicks. Now, so far, this one is kind of odd. As we saw earlier, the North has De'Aaron Fox. And if I remember correctly, the Cavs have Kay Cunningham. That's right. But um, the Knicks. The Knicks are a little funny because they brought back Emmanuel quickly. And they're still a top three seed. That's mainly due to the fact that they have OG, Julius Randle, Mikhail Bridges. I mean, they have a lot of depth, so it's no surprise that they were like completely fine with losing Jalen Brunson. Having a look at Milwaukee, we have Tyrese Maxey, Gary Trent Jr., Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and Brooke Lopez. That is a great starting five, if I'm going to be honest. Not too far off what they have in real life. If I remember correctly, Damian Lillard is like an 89 overall. So Milwaukee did get an upgrade, but it wasn't too substantial. Definitely can't say the same thing about Philadelphia because Shea Gilgis Alexander, who was almost the MVP last season, he's now paired up with one of the smoothest scorers we've ever seen, and Joel Embiid. Now the Chicago Chicago Bulls, these guys are also funny as well because Terry Rozier is their starting point guard. I don't understand why 2K thinks these guys are any good. No offense to Zach Levine or Alonzo Ball or anything like that, but I mean, it's not like they got an all-star, so how are they so high? I don't really know. They're definitely going to fall as the season progresses. The Pacers are the seventh seed with John Morant, and right behind them is Scoot Henderson with the Boston Celtics. And as always, we have to go ahead and see who's sitting at the bottom of the conference. With 13 wins and 41 losses, the Washington Wizards are the fifth seed what a bummer for these guys because they added jamal murray who's definitely a lot better than malcolm brogdon just recently signed a really big contract in real life so i mean the money says he's really good but wasn't good enough in 2k to push him into the play-in tournament at least but i'll give everyone the benefit of the doubt because they originally came into this year as a rebuilding team i would have thought that they actually had a chance of like making a postseason run to be honest i wouldn't say it would have been anything too crazy but come on a 15 seed i thought that was going to be atlanta they actually have 20 five wins instead of 13. Chris Paul's averaging like nine points and eight assists per game while at the same time only shooting 37% from the field. But anyway, moving on to the Western Conference, we have Minnesota, Denver, and Dallas. Just to serve as a memory refresher, top three teams have Darius Garland, Damian Lillard, and Drew Holiday. Dude, look at these ratings. They have LaMelo Ball with a 90, DeJounte's here with 88, Brandon Ingram's also an 88, and Zion's a 90 as well. These guys might be a sleeper pick to win the championship. They are lacking a 
little bit in the center spot with Daniel Tice. The Los Angeles Lakers, uh, they still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but they also added Fred Van Vliet. But not every single team in the league is going to be as good as those guys, especially not the Utah Jazz, as they only have 14 wins and 40 losses. I don't believe I mentioned the fact that they had Kobe White. There's not really a whole lot you could do when some teams get superstars and you get a potential all-star. He's only 24 years old. 2K currently has him averaging around 18 points per game with seven assists. So yeah, not really the greatest talent you could have gotten. At the end of the regular season, we have Luka Doncic winning the MVP. Zachary Rishache is rookie of the year. Amin Thompson is the sixth man and Victor Wimbanyama wins DPOY. Having a look at only the point guards for all NBA teams. Of course, we obviously have Luka. Shea just barely made the first team as well, averaging 27 points per game. John Morant of the Indiana Pacers makes all NBA second team. Last but not least, we have Tyrese Halliburton and LaMelo Ball. In the play-in tournament, we have a handful of great matchups to go over, but first it's the Lakers clinching their playoff spot against the Spurs. I'm not sure how these guys even made the play-in tournament, but after simulating, it looks like the Houston Rockets have been eliminated. To get the win, CJ McCollum had 24 points, 4 rebounds, and 4 assists. But over in the East, Stephen Curry has a chance to dismantle the Celtics yet again, this time in the play-in tournament. Boston leads pretty heavily in the fourth quarter, and they do end up getting the job done. Scoot Henderson had 26 points, 2 rebounds and three assists uh yeah the bucks just eliminated stephen curry but now at this point our playoff matchups are officially set some of you guys might be wondering why i didn't show the spurs versus clippers matchup and that's because i accidentally just sim passed it up first, over in the East, we have the third seeded New York Knicks going up against the Indiana Pacers. Just giving my quick objective opinion on who I think is going to win this game. New York for sure has the deeper roster, but do not count this Pacers team out just yet. John Morant, as we all know, is a great player. So is Pascal Siakam and Miles Turner. I feel like they have the ammunition to give these guys a competitive series. And in game number one, it looks like I was absolutely correct as John Morant had 32 points, 7 rebounds, and 8 assists. Over in the Western Conference, we have the Denver Nuggets and New Orleans. Pelicans. We have a star studded matchup at the point guard position with Damian Lillard and LaMelo Ball. Going all the way down to the wire, it was a two point game with the Pelicans ultimately getting the win. Coincidentally enough, it's the Golden State Warriors and Dallas Mavericks facing off against one another in our next series. As I'm sure all of you know, Luka Doncic was previously a Maverick. Don't forget that Klay Thompson is also a part of that Dallas team now. So this is without a doubt going to be one of the most competitive series. Game number one had Kyrie Irving's name written all over it as he had 35 points point six rebounds and 12 assists to get the win after simulating a little bit further we have five teams sitting up two games to one meanwhile the timberwolves pelicans and boston are all up three to nothing now philadelphia doesn't want to lose this game right here but in the last couple of seconds chicago just swept these guys up from under their feet with five seconds remaining lonzo ball assists nikola vucevic on a dunk soon after shea takes a mid-range jump shot to win the game and it ultimately misses and unfortunately in only four games the Denver Nuggets are going to be eliminated. As much as I would love to go over all these games, I'm actually going to go ahead and simulate the round. The Raptors have just been eliminated quickly, followed by the Clippers. There goes Philly alongside Indiana. The Mavericks are no more. Cleveland somehow manages to get upset by the Bucks. Last but not least, we have the Los Angeles Lakers. And just like that, our second round matchups are officially set, kicking things off with OKC and the Pelicans. I don't know how I forgot that OKC has Alex Caruso now. I was low key being a hater and wasn't expecting them to be any good. But they're here in the second round playing this stacked New Orleans team. As long as the coaching staff makes sure to take advantage of the mismatch at the center position, James Harden will potentially be making another finals with this organization. Having a look at the box score, that was definitely what happened as Shet had 29 points and 12 rebounds. Harden actually only took six shots, but he was dishing out 15 assists. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Peyton Pritchard is actually starting ahead of Scoot Henderson. Kind of makes sense because, I mean, he for sure has more playoff experience so this is one of the few teams where one of the trades that we made doesn't really have that big of an impact on their team well actually that's a lie it had a pretty big impact on the celtics just not in the way that they would have wanted let's see if it's going to affect them in game number one so far it's looking like that's going to be the case Jalen brown had 50 points one rebound one assist one steal one block and one turnover that's definitely one of the strangest stat lines i've ever seen with darius garland leading the charge for minnesota they do get the win against the dubs now with a fifth and 
and eight seed matched up in the second round. It's Terry Rozier's Chicago Bulls getting the victory. I went ahead and simulated a couple of games further to not waste your guys' time. And at this point, the top seed in every single series is leading three games to one. How crazy would it be if all of them ended up winning this game? I'm going to go ahead and simulate it. The Pelicans just lost, followed by the Boston Celtics. Golden State is no more. And the Milwaukee, yeah, they all lost in game number five. Now, at this point, we only have two all-star point guards remaining, and neither of them are inside of this matchup, but the Knicks end up winning by seven points. Emmanuel quickly had 23, three, and six. Now, the primary matchup for us to pay attention to was James Harden versus Darius Garland. I don't know how these were, like, the only good point guards to make it this deep. Really, it's just because their teams are really good, but I'm really interested at this point to see who's going to come out on top. Now, unfortunately, the Timberwolves just blew OKC away by 26 points. James Harden was getting absolutely locked up as he shot two for 10 from the field, only scoring 12 points. Definitely can't say the same thing about Darius Garland because he had 28, 2, and 10. Yeah, I'm going to sim through this game and the next one as well. Both the Timberwolves and New York are up three to nothing. There's no way they're both going to get the sweep, right? The Chicago Bulls just got eliminated and yeah, there goes OKC. Just like that, our NBA Finals matchup is officially set. We have Darius Garland's Minnesota Timberwolves going up against Emmanuel Quickly's New York Knicks. This is for sure not the teams I was expecting to make it this far. But you know what? I'm here for it. That's the matchup to pay attention to. We have an 83 and 82 overall. So I guess what we've learned from this video so far is that maybe the point guard spot isn't the most important. In game number one, it is going to go to the Timberwolves. I just realized we haven't even gotten the opportunity to hop into any of these games. And I was too busy talking to realize that this was the perfect moment to do just that. So at this point, Minnesota is up two to nothing. There's no way they're going to win three in a row, right? Okay, well, that just happened. The only all-star point guard left, Darius Garland, had 29 points, four rebounds, and six assists. But all right, New York is trying their hardest to not make this an anticlimactic ending. Currently, they're up by seven points with two minutes remaining. Thankfully, they actually managed to win at least one game. Emmanuel Quickly and Julius Randle were both leading the charge. The Knicks don't have home court advantage, so they definitely have a hill to climb. And it's without a doubt the hardest one in NBA history. Looking at the scoreboard, this game is officially over. And just like that, Darius Garland comes out on top winning the NBA championship. I'm kind of starstruck, to be honest, because how was it him of all people? Unfortunately, he doesn't end up winning finals MVP. That actually goes to Carl Anthony Towns. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my most recent upload. In that one, we've replaced all current NBA teams with their all-time variant. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you all in the next one. I'm out.